there's far more pressure on even open field growers to continually grow. The land's getting tired, there's getting bigger disease pressure. So vertical farming really does give a very good environmental solution to areas that are looking to be self-sustainable. And you know, there's, we're going to struggle to supply enough food for the world in the next 20 years. So it's utilising space and it's going upwards and it's in existing spaces in big cities. So from a logistical point of view and everything, it's really giving a good option. It's growing slowly, so we're trying to understand exactly where, where the industry is going, but we're really at the head of the curve and not waiting for people to come to us, we're going to find it. I mean, I think there's several different spaces that is being booked under the same vertical farming. So you've got vertical farming that are taking spaces of warehouses in specific areas and they're setting up, they've got a specific growing unit that, that stacks vertical. The commercial side of vertical farming is pretty cool because it's it's setting up the same growing system you can plug into your shed at home and you can grow anything baby leaf. That system will allow you to continually grow. And it's in places that are, can't grow open field vegetables because of environment or there's no land or no availability. So these growers are setting up and, and building in these big factories, just utilising old space. And Seminus have been working with aero farms in, on the east coast. They're, they're starting new, so helping them to understand how to work with seed companies really helping them to understand what varieties can do what in, in, in agronomic conditions so we can match up to their systems because in the vertical farming you talk about intense light so it's intense light and growing so it's growing 24 hours a day where in open field when it goes dark it mostly slows down and stops growing unless it depends on the temperature so it's a completely different growing system so you need a different type so we've been connecting aero farms with our seminist breeders to understand what they're really looking for and then looking for varieties like in lettuce that don't bolt or don't bolt so fast so it's, it's a slower growing so it gives them better opportunities to grow. I think aero farms are the ones that's really started the evolution of vertical farming. Them, them guys have really done an excellent job of how they've marketed themselves. They've really set a presence for the vertical farming industry. We see now there's a lot of companies following that with a little bit slightly different or a little bit different versions. So in the Netherlands we see there's, that they're growing things on rooftops. That's another version of vertical farming, but these, these guys are looking for support with the right varieties for the right conditions. So that's something we're trying to develop from Seminist perspective as well. I think the, the diversity we bring with crops and the experience we have in, in, other, in other areas and other countries, that if you take how we're testing a variety today, we test it in multiple environments. We already have very good ground knowledge of what it works in high light levels, high temperatures, and we have that experience at, at local level. I think that's why Seminis are, are, are great for that sort of customer feedback and information. We understand very quickly what works, what doesn't, and we have people on the floor that can really manage that account locally.